I'd like to thank everybody, especially Golda, who was my first contact with Nectara. And today we're going to be making some brigadeiros. Brigadeiros is a, a very traditional Brazilian truffles. It's basically like the most basic staple in the Brazilian sweet cooking. We have brigadeiro in absolutely every situation we can think of. When you have friends together, we eat that. When you have a broken heart, you eat that. When you have a birthday, you have brigadeiro. So it's really, it's like our cookies or ice cream. It's there all the time. It's very sweet. The traditional one is made with chocolate, with cocoa powder. Actually, we're drinking chocolate like this week. And with time, like people started inventing and they started innovating as well. So you can have it like in absolutely any flavor you can think of. Today, I'm going to be making three flavors. So I'll teach the base, and from the base, we're going to do like three different ones chocolate, coconut, and the white one. So I'll start with the recipe because it has to cook for a while. So while I'm cooking, we can talk. <laughs> so here I have one can of condensed milk, sweetened condensed milk. I like the, the target one, it's the most basic one. It's very cheap and it's really good. So I'm going to put that in a pan. My stove is still off at this point, so I'll put everything in a pan. And I'm also going to add a tablespoon of butter. It doesn't matter if the butter is in room temperature or if it's cold, anything will do. It's really a foolproof recipe, so anyone can do that. I am going to turn my stove on and I'll put it in medium to low heat. I'm going to show you more or less what I'm going to do. You guys can see it. Here I'm just going to stir. And I'll be stirring for around 20 minutes or so. I'm going to put my stove, my heat a bit higher because I have some experience in it, so we can go a bit faster instead of being here cooking for 20 minutes. And the secret here to have it glossy and shiny is to stir all the way and always in the same direction. You cannot stop stirring it, otherwise it burns, especially when there is no chocolate, nothing in it. So, because it has a lot of sugar and a lot of milk protein in it, it burns pretty easily. So it's kind of a fudge, but it's runnier. It's a bit softer texture. So we're gonna be stirring it for a while. I brought three different versions of it, three different uses. So I'm gonna show you how to put it on top of a cake. What is the, the texture we, we want to achieve when we wanna Use it as frosting or as a chocolate sauce or a chocolate spread. And also, what is the point that we need when we're going to eat it with a spoon, which is something that we all love to do. Actually, we prefer eating it with a spoon than eating like rolled as a truffle. The truffle is just pretty, but it's much nicer when you just share, share a, a pan of it with a spoon. <laughs> It's a very social activity that we do. And I'm also going to show the, the rolled ones that I have pre-made because they need to rest for a few hours. They need to be fully um, chilled so we can roll them. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to cook it for a bit. It will take a while, hopefully not. And usually when you do just one flavor, you mix the flavor in here. So for example, if you're doing chocolate, the traditional one, I would mix in the chocolate powder in here before I turn the, the heat on. And then I mix everything together, put the butter and cook it. 
something that you can also do is add a can of heavy cream. It helps with texture, it helps with the mouthful filling. And it also helps uh, the spoilage of it. But it flies, it doesn't change a lot of stuff. It doesn't change a lot. So what you want to do is like scrape the sides all the time so it won't burn and keep on stirring. Alini, if you don't mind, will you tip the camera um, down to the pan? Yes. I'm just, it's just cooking. So if anyone have any questions, I'm happy to answer. What I'm so, going to do now, yeah. Elena, you, you said you would put the cocoa powder in before you start cooking? Yes. I didn't here because I'm going to teach the, the base and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to split it into three different pans and I'm going to do three different flavors. That's and, why I didn't add the chocolate here at this point. And you said 20 minutes, so um, will the cocoa powder, will you be able to know when it's done if you got the cocoa powder in there or do you just yes. make it? Oh, yeah, okay. so you know when it's done by the by the texture and it's like you see here you can still see that it's covering the whole bottom of the pan. When it's really thick and you do like that and the whole thing come down, it means that it's ready. Um, so here Robin I have has a question. She's wondering if you use chocolate chip morsels and where do you get calibut chocolate? I do. I actually use calibut for the brigadeiros. Um, the one in Calibre we call the gourmet chocolate because it's it's not like the traditional one that we grew up with. It's a more high-end thing. I get Calibre from Amazon and it's pretty expensive here compared to Israel, but it's still affordable. I think I get like a bag of um, five pounds for 20 something dollars so it's pretty it's pretty affordable and then another question uh, from the kaisers yeah. they're wondering if you are using chocolate from a bar do we go ahead and add it as well yes you can add in the beginning as well you can break it i really like the linked bar i think it tastes really good also the morsels and also the the cocoa powder Actually, you can add at any point. This is, as I said, it's a really foolproof recipe. Even when it goes really wrong, it's still delicious. So this is probably the first recipe that we learn as Brazilians. We learn how to do that cold, like just mixing certain cocoa pot, sweetened um, milk and condensed milk and the cocoa powder and then put in the in the microwave for a few minutes. So we call it brigadeiro when we are like three, four years old. <laughs> and you can basically add anything. You can do like churros flavor by adding dulce de leche and a bit of cinnamon. You can put, there's one that I really like that it's with amarena cherries and dark chocolate. You can play with the sprinkles. You can put peanut butter. You can uh, roll it in corn flakes. You can we're gonna make one with coconut. You can put um, peanut, you can put any kind of nuts, you can put fruit. Lemon pie one is also really good. So you can, you can play around. If you put anything that it's like citrus, you need to put after you turn your stove off. Otherwise it, it goes bad, it will get sour. So for example, for the lemon one, after it's ready, we take it out of the, we remove it from the heat and then we put a bit of uh, lemon zest. So here you can see it started getting thicker. So, okay. there it is. Uh, yes? Okay, um, there are two questions. Uh, can you show us the chocolate drink powder that you prefer? Yes, it's nice quick. I'm gonna show you in a, in a bit. Okay, and how much chocolate powder is? I believe it's like three tablespoons, right? Well, yeah, for one can it's three tablespoons, like pretty full tablespoons. Mm -hmm. But you can't get wrong with it. Sometimes I think it's too 
it's too light and I just add an extra tablespoon. Sometimes I want it a bit lighter and I put a bit less. So you really can't go wrong with it. So here we're almost there. I'm going to remove it from the heat and I'm going to put just a bit in another pan to finish cooking with the flavor. So here I'm going to make the, in a much lower heat, I'm going to make the white one. And I'll show you when it's done. It's almost there. So this that we're making, it's the texture for eating with a spoon. If you want to roll it, you need to cook it for a few three to five extra minutes. The white one without chocolate, you need to be very careful because it can, it can burn really easily. I actually love when it burns a bit because it gets like a caramel crunch to it. But if you're gonna sell, if you're gonna you know, offer to other people, just avoid doing that. And this is almost done. I will show in a minute how it is. So you need to keep on stirring all the time. You cannot, um, this is a sweet that you cannot leave the pan alone like for a second. It's more or less like making caramel. I know that my sister-in-law is here watching me and she's really good at making fudge in South Africa. So she knows that you cannot leave this alone. So this is ready. As you can see, you see the texture that the whole thing comes down. So this is how you know when it's ready. I'm gonna pour this one here. Let it cool down. I'm gonna use this one pan today, but if uh, you're making it at home, you can use more than a pan for sure. So the flavors would be more distinct. And I'm gonna do the coconut one. So I have here a bit of coconut milk. Um, you can use around a third of a can. I'm using less here because there is around a third of a can here. And I'm also gonna use some Coconut flakes. I also put around three tablespoons of coconut flakes. Actually, I put it to taste, but if you want to measure a good amount, you use is three tablespoons of it. And the coconut is really, really, really good. Usually, people who are not Brazilian, this is their favorite because it's not as sweet. The coconut cuts the sweet a bit. They use unsweetened coconut flake. So this one is also almost ready. With the coconut, Alini, did you use only the fat part on the top or did you use it just from the can like the liquid? I use both of them and mix them a bit. And it really doesn't matter because it's actually for taste. If okay. you use the, the fat part, it will get a bit more, a bit harder at the end, a bit chewier. And when it cools down, and if you get only the, the water, it will get only the flavor. So, Thank you. And somebody asked about um, if you can make it parve by using uh, margarine or vegan butter. You can, omit, you can totally omit the, um, the butter if you want to. The butter is just for making it glossy. So if you don't want to use it, you don't need to use it. So here, that's the, the one that I use. It's like based on the kids one, yeah. I'm going to change pens again. And this is here. And I'm going to use like a... But, but how do you do it far there with the condensed milk? Yeah, if, um, you can use... I know that in Brazil you have soy condensed milk. Yeah. And you also have... Um, I think uh, here you have like lactose free condensed milk, but I don't think it's part of it actually. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how you can make that part of it. 
Um, also in Israel, we didn't have anything without the milk. You can make vegan condensed milk for sure with nut milk, but it's going to be a mission <laughs> to get the right texture and the right taste. Usually the best one is with coconut. So you can use coconut milk. And um, I don't know who asked that, but if uh, she's interested, I can help her making condensed milk with coconut from scratch. Mm -hmm. It's pretty easy, but it's 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 a hard work. It's a very very <laughs> um, it's a hard work. I prefer to buy at home. In Israel, we didn't have any any condensed milk that would give me the right texture to roll them. So I used to make them from from zero scratch at home. So you use regular milk and just cook it to. Condense it or what? Regular milk, a ton of sugar, and you cook it until it's reduced to half. So it's a process that takes over an hour. It takes two hours depending on the quantity you make. So you might be able to do it, let's say, with goat milk and just a lot of sugar and to make it condense if somebody mm -hmm. cannot have. Yes, but uh, goat milk is not as fat as cow milk, right? So, mm -hmm. and you also have goat milk has a very strong taste. So, it would taste like goat milk. I prefer coconut milk. I think that the vegan version that I like the most is with coconut milk or peanut milk. Mm -hmm. So you can flavor that with peanut and coconut and people won't realize that it's not real milk and they're like, it's not cow's milk. Yeah. So here, mm -hmm. it's almost there and it should stay a bit longer. So here the chocolate is almost done. And again, this is the, the spoon one. We cannot roll this because it's not cooked enough for you to have the, um, the one to roll. You need, I'm gonna make this one to roll. So you guys will see the, the texture I'm trying to achieve here. You need to cook a bit longer. And I have one that it's ready there so I can show you how to roll it. I have a trick that you won't, you won't use margarine as well or butter. You can use margarine too, but I, I think that especially if you're using a good chocolate like Calibo, you don't want to put margarine in it. Mm -hmm. okay, so one is asking Alini, when would you add the real chocolate pieces? In the beginning. Oh, okay, thank you. In the beginning. So here, you have the texture to roll. The whole thing comes out of the pan and it's pretty easy to see when I do it like this. Oh, something here, one side. And I do it like this, the whole thing comes. Hey, Aline, we can't see you right now. Oh, sorry? We can't see you right now. No, I can't. <laughs> so when I do it like this, the whole thing comes out. And whatever it's in the end, it's delicious. But if you're gonna search, other people make you don't wanna scrape it. If you're gonna eat at all, okay. What time are they coming? Six. Oh, um, I can start doing it now. So here, I can put the warm door. I think everyone needs to go on mute real quick so we can just hear Aline. Am I muted? No, we had a side conversation popping up. Oh. <laughs> So here we have all the three of them. Um, coconut one, usually we put a bit of coconut on top so people know. Something else that Brazilians love to do is a combination of powdered milk and Nutella. So if you want to do powdered milk, you also put three tablespoons of powdered milk in the beginning and you sprinkle a bit of it at the end. And Nutella, you can just mix it in or you can put Nutella on top of it, which is really good. It's my favorite one. So here I have a tiny cake that I made yesterday. That's a carrot cake. It's a Brazilian carrot cake. It's very different from the American carrot cake. It doesn't have the spices. It looks like a white cake. And here, this is the, the spoon one, the one that we made. I made this yesterday. So you can use it on cakes. 
and it's delicious. Instead of frosty, instead of buttercream, this is what we usually eat in Brazil. Every cake has brigadeiro on it. We just have excuses to eat brigadeiro in every single situation we have. And what we really like doing, it's feeling like the whole thing with it. So when you cut, it's like a volcano cake. It's how we call it. We actually call it a swimming pool cake. So when you cut it, it just comes out like a lot of brigadeiro, like, um, like lava. And you basically eat brigadeiro with a bit of cake. The cake is just a, a vector for it. And here, this is here. This I made yesterday is the one that we're gonna roll. So after it's ready, you put it on a plate and you cover it with, with cling film and leave it in room temperature for at least two hours. I like leaving it overnight, but two hours when it's like totally cool, it's fine. So you see that I take this out. And the trick, people usually use butter to roll it. I don't like using butter. I like using water. And here, I have a bit of water. I'm going to wet my hands. I put the same amount of water that I would um, put as a moisturizer in my hand, just to make it a bit wet. I'm going to do the same thing with the spoon. So here, I take a bit of it. And I'll Alina, roll it. Alina, can you refrigerate it? Uh, to you can refrigerate it. it. You can freeze it for up to three months. If you're going to freeze it, freeze it like this. Don't freeze it with the sprinkles on because once it's falling, the sprinkles start to, to sweat and it's just not, it's not pretty. It's still delicious, but not pretty. So you put it on a tray one by one. After half an hour, when they are like a bit frozen, you can put everything in a bag, in a Ziploc bag, and you can leave in the in the fridge for up to three months. So here I roll one. You get one of those tiny cups. Those are smaller than the the mini muffin one. I get those from the Brazilian shops. So if you guys are here in Sandy Springs, there's a Brazilian shop here. There's a big one in Marietta as well. And you put it like that. And you spread it around, around the table. So everybody can have one. I'm gonna make another one. And this is, even people who don't like sweets will like this, I promise. It's really, really, really good. And if someone says they don't like it, so Brazilian is offensive. So you guys need to tell us that you really like it. <laughs> because we get really offended. Jamie Oliver went to Brazil once, and he told us that this is not good, that this is just sugar, and that he didn't like it. And Brazilian people was so, so mad at him that they, I think that they, they try to boycott his restaurant in Sao Paulo. I'm not sure, but I remember that he was all over the internet when he said that. People were very, very, very offended. So you cannot tell them that. <laughs> so there it is. Um, the spoon one is the best one. You can just, you know, get your friends together. You can do, also what I want to do is get like some, Tiny glasses or here, I have a small map and you can mix them. So you can do like, for example, a bounty flavor one where you put the, this one, you put the chocolate one and then another spoon here and the coconut one on top. Then you put more chocolate because there's no such thing as too much chocolate, right? Yeah. So here, <laughs> with more chocolate, and you also see that in like parties and weddings, also like that, like in clear containers, like small containers, so people can eat it like that. 
this is all also like a very famous a very common way to eat this so here i'm going to sprinkle a bit of coconut and it looks like that it's really good this is really 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 good uh, Another sprinkle that I really like to use, but they are much more delicate, is this one. That's from Calibo. You can also buy it on Amazon. And they are like this. They're very delicate, so they melt really easily. They're like this, like small squares. They're very pretty, like very, very, very pretty. Okay, I can leave the link later. But they're quite pricey, so usually I use this one when I use real chocolate to make it. So people know that it's different. Lini, do you recommend to use unsweetened cocoa powder? Um, you can use unsweetened cocoa powder, but I think it gets too um, it gets too bitter. Like I know we're dealing with like sweetened condensed milk. But the purpose of it is like to be very sweet. I like it's very sweet. I've never and done just cocoa powder because I think it's too bitter. I think it, it lacks something. So and if we want, and if we want to make it um, with maracuja, with the um, passion fruit, you can. The um, passion fruit, you add a bit of passion fruit juice. At the, at the end, end after, like you, after you take it out of the after you take it out of the um, the heat, let's see, like this. Hi. Okay. After you you go you take it out of the heat, you can put a bit of of juice, maybe um like thirty mils. I, I don't speak like ounces, so I'll look for you. How much tell me in grams, it's fine. Heat. Okay, I do grams. 30 mils more or less. Again? Uh, 30 mils. 30, 30 mils? Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, it, it, behave, it behaves like the citrus, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, Thank you. You can use just the pulp of it also. Mm -hmm. and I, I like the seeds. Some people don't, so I would like safe it but i like the seeds i like the crunchiness of the seeds it's really good it's hard to find here um with, without uh, with the seeds very expensive i paid i think five bucks in a tiny passion fruit but again on amazon you can buy it frozen it's the same thing and from the amount that you made like the one can of of uh, condensed milk how many uh, truffles you can get about? Um, between 18 and 20. And they weight around 15 grams. Which I also don't know how, many, how much that is in ounces, but I can't Google. <laughs> but it's, it's like a tablespoon. It's what I make by, you know, like two thirds of a tablespoon. 15 grams, it's about uh, half an ounce. Okay. So it will be like this size. Um, the gourmet ones that are the ones with real chocolate and like more premium ingredients that we use, they're usually a bit uh, bigger. So they're usually around 18 grams instead of 15. And you can also do like really tiny ones of like 10, 11 grams for um, birthday parties, for kids' birthday parties. So they're usually smaller. Thank you so much for all the, <laughs> the answers. It's, uh, it's very exciting. Yeah, this, the so, Lini, can you tell us a little bit about um, the shop, your shop or how you, how you sell chocolates and maybe how we could buy chocolate from you? Yes, of course. Actually, this is not my main product. My main product are chocolate chocolates, like hand painted chocolates. Um, and it's really cool. I think there's only one more person here in Georgia making them. And we're totally different. We have like different styles, different feelings. So uh, we're actually friends, so we're not competitors. Um, you can buy online. I think my link will be done. Yeah, I just saw my link popping up there. You can also order from Instagram if 
you're not like, you know, in the mood to go to the website, but the website has all the options and you can pick it up here in Sandy Springs or I can ship it and I ship it all over the US. Right now during the warm months is a bit trickier. So because uh, chocolate cannot be shipped if it's above 34 Celsius, which is around 70 degrees, I think, 75 degrees, it melts. <laughs> so even if I put ice packs and everything, it needs to be sent, it needs to be shipped uh, overnight, which is a bit pricier. So right now I'm selling only local, only to Georgia. You guys are on Georgia, so that's not a problem. <laughs> This um, chocolate, the, the small chocolate sprinkle that you showed, what is it called? Chocolate Chalet? sprinkle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but what can you show us again the package? Uh, yes. The one, one the big package that you. Uh, oh, the big bag here. Yeah. This one? Yeah, this one, yeah. And this okay. you get it also on Amazon or so? Or in the on Amazon. Store? If you put a uh, cocoa, uh, cocoa berry or calibo, it will give you a list of everything they have. Mm -hmm. Also the same uh, manufacturer. It's, yeah, it's the same brand. It's um, calibo, it's really, it's really good uh, value for money. And it's a chocolate that if you are starting to work with chocolate, like learning to temper and learning how to deal with it, it's a very um, non-brainer. So it's really easy to work with it. I usually use Calibo to do the shells and I use Vorona, which is the, the finest chocolate you can find in the fillings and, and some of the shells as well, depending on the flavor. But Calibo is, is great also, it's a really good brand. You can also find, um, oh, I forgot the name of it now. It's a name in Spanish, I remember. I'll let you guys know. But there's another, another brand that is really good. I work mainly with those two. I wouldn't use Vorona in, uh, in the sweets and the Brigadeiro because you know it's a pity to spend like plus like 50 bucks for a pound. So it's a pity to melt that and sweeten condensed milk. Calibo is like half the price, it's like a third of the price, so it's okay to do that. But Vorona, I wouldn't put something so premium and you know something so sweet. Rochelle? Um, so to make the truffles, is that what needs to cook for 20 minutes? Yeah, it's around 20 minutes. It will depend on how good is your stove and on the pan. I usually use um, pans that has like a triple bottom so the, the heat will diffuse better and there is like less chance of burning. And I prefer non-steak when you don't have any experience cooking it because when you have the non-steak and you do the task of doing like that to see if it's ready or not, if it's non-steak, it will come out anyway. So sometimes you take it a bit earlier. And another, uh, another tip to know if it's ready, it's to hold it like that with the spatula. If it falls as a block, then it's ready. If it falls like, you know, as water, it's, it's very liquid, very fluid, then you still need to cook a bit longer. So that's also a good, a good tip for beginners. So if you make it and then you put it in the fridge for two hours, can you take it out and you'll be able to roll it or you have to bring it to room temperature? Um, you have to chill it in room temperature. If you have like a brigadier emergency and you need it for two hours, it happens, believe me. Then you can put it in the fridge, but it's not optimal. Um, usually it's better to leave it cold and room temperature, especially if there is like real chocolate in it because the humidity of the fridge is not good for the, for the chocolate. Also in the freezer, if you're gonna freeze it, you need to pack it really, really well to put it in the freezer. So I put it in a Ziploc, I vacuum pack it. You don't need to put it in vacuum, but you know, it's my, work so it needs to be perfect when it's defrosted. You can also freeze it like that in piping bags to use for I mean this one's dying but <laughs> you can also use it um, 
uh, phrases like that in piping bags she is like on cakes or to fill a bonbon or whatever um and yeah it, when you when it's on it you can just roll it in the sprinkles if you use this sprinkle that it's uh, not real chocolate you can freeze it like that but if it's a colored one if it's coconut if it's real chocolate anything that it's not that i wouldn't roll it like that you can also put it in sugar cover in sugar it's sweeter but <laughs> it's still really good and granulated sugar if you put caster sugar it's it will be gone soon because it's very humid so the caster sugar disappears okay um if, feel free uh, i'm talking now to the participant feel free to ask questions if you have meanwhile maya and nicole have a question how do you store it which you just answered so um the freezer or in the refrigerator not outside right yes you can, can you leave it in room temperature for up to five days mm -hmm. and the fridge for up to 10 days. After that, because there is a lot of sugar content to it, it starts crystallizing. I think it's delicious. I think it's, it's my favorite one. When like the outside is really crusty and the inside it's very um, silky. But you cannot sell it like that because, you know, it's not as fresh. But if you're making it for yourself or for your family, it's fine. It's delicious. <laughs> okay, Roberto has a question. Can you show some chocolate samples that you sell? I can. I need to get it on the stock. Just one second. That is my dad, by the way. Hi, dad. That's a proof that I'm really Jewish. My parents are here. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be back in a minute. One second. Yeah, Janet, um, she put her website uh, earlier in the chat, so you can uh, log on to the chat and then find her address. In. You see? Sarah, I've been, I'm on the website right now. There's no address. Uh-huh. Okay. So, but there's a place to contact her? And there's no address on that either. Okay. Alini, is there... Janet is asking uh, about my person, how to contact you. She said on the website it doesn't show. Oh, you have a contact us form at the website that you can email me. And you can also contact me on Facebook or Instagram. Instagram is the easiest, actually, or the website form for Instagram. I'm not a Facebook person, so it's very so easy for me to miss something. Retail shop? I'm sorry? Is there a retail shop or? No, not yet. Hopefully okay. in the future. <laughs> That's what I didn't understand from the website. Thank you. Oh, no. So here it is. Um, this one is passion fruit and guava. It's really good. <laughs> this one is raspberry. It is more red, but I don't know. The light is not as good. This one is homemade cookie butter. It's really good. This one is my best seller. It's what the Americans like the most. It's really, really, really good. And it's the one that I sell the most. Every time that someone gets one in an assortment box, they write me back and they're like, oh my God, we love that one. Like, how can I buy a box of it? I also have one that it's Nutella and peanut butter that I don't have here. It's sold out. And that one is also like, people really like it. This one is uh, peanut butter, just peanut butter. And I'll be making more this week. Absolutely I've been gorgeous, Alini. Stunning. I'm sorry? They're stunning. Thanks. <laughs> this week I'll be having some different ones. I'll be making strawberry balsamic, apricot lavender, um, yuzu, which is a Japanese fruit. The symbols, um, something between lime and orange, but it's different. More passion fruit. Passion fruit is also very popular. People really like it. Lini, you uh, mentioned your Instagram, but um, through your website, when you uh, press on the link, it doesn't uh, transfer you to the Instagram. Oh, my Instagram is the same name as my website. It is Luca Chocolatery. 
Okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Any more questions? We still have more, a few more minutes. So if somebody has more questions, feel free to ask. Well, you can also <laughs> you, I saw that uh, um, there is lactose-free condensed milk here in America. In Brazil, you don't have that. I think now you do, actually. In Asia, I didn't, for sure. But you can play with it, you know, you can use like lactose free, you can use the vegan one, as I said. Um, you can mix um, dulce de leche in it, and it's delicious. You can put a bit of sea salt to make a salted caramel one. You can basically like use the base of butter or no butter and condensed milk for anything really. Can you put your samples on the table or on the cup on the cooking uh, pot so, it, yeah. uh, so it's easier to see? Oh, you guys are gonna hear the boss crying. He's waking you up from the nap. Switch the camera. <laughs> so he he's the real boss here. Let's see if you can turn the camera. Yeah. Wow, so elegant. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Okay. How do you do the blue one? Is it the food coloring? Um, it's a colored cocoa butter. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. And the spray gun. Mm -hmm. so it's very fun to make them as well. It takes each bonbons take around five days to be ready. So mm -hmm. it's very artisanal. Even if you have like a big business, it takes five days to be done because one day you you polish and clean the molds. So just by polishing the molds like several hours. Uh, the next day you paint and you let it dry overnight. The next day you shell it and then you fill it. Then the, the fillings need to crystallize overnight as well. And then on the fourth day you cap them and they're ready. <laughs> so that's why you are doing it and not me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And okay. chocolate is a very, it's like, it's actually the hardest ingredient you can work with in the pastry world. So, mm -hmm. you know, if like the humidity is a bit off, if the weather is, it's, you know, I need to have like climate control, humidity control all the time. I cannot, my, now that I'm working from home, my husband's go crazy because he's also doing home office. So the whole house needs to be like super cold all the time and all the doors closed and nobody can turn the oven on and you know, like no water, no nothing. Like it's, I'm, I'm very paranoid about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, chocolate with carrot is excellent, says Marcia. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, unless there are any other questions, I would like to thank everyone for joining us today and mainly uh, thank Alini for such a fun presentation. Very good. I'm going now to the kitchen to make something out of chocolate because I won't be able to spend the weight. Uh -huh. um, somebody said to Dara Alini, I am Maxim. Yes. Yeah. And Obrigada is in Portuguese. in Portuguese, yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Somebody has another comment or so before we say goodbye? Oh, I see another Tada here from Marcy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, we really thank you very much also to Golda who made the connection to you and we're looking forward to seeing.